it's really fun. So this is a bit of a shorter video and sadly not a long thorough tutorial. I made this dress very impulsively for my sister who was to go very last minute to my brother's graduation and dinner. And he's graduating from a very snobby fancy school so the dress code was ball gown and make it expensive. So this is my sister in the gown at the graduation. And in case anyone was wondering how fancy we're talking. Now I didn't have much time, like at all, so I had to make it a pretty, supposed to be simple design. I just took my basic bodice and sleeve patterns and made some simple-ish alterations. Because of the stressful time limit, I probably shouldn't have committed to filming anything, but it was way too tempting, so I decided to make it simpler and try and make one of those cozy sew-along videos instead. Before anything, I just wanted to attempt to express my immense gratitude for over 10,000 of you now that saw one of my videos and thought, yeah, I like this content. Or you accidentally pressed the subscribe button, but I'm okay with that too. So thousands of thanks and I will again attempt to upload more content and more often and stuff. So thank you. Mwah. So fancy smancy or not, we're gonna be sustainable and thrifty, so the fabric I used was this navy blue velvet curtain. Now you might be thinking, silk velvet? No, obviously not. It's cotton velvet, or I think more accurately, velveteen, which may look nice and fancy, but it's actually not. It's mostly found in curtains and baby clothing, but I was kind of counting on people not knowing the difference, fancy, rich as they may be. Though it was a pretty chunkable amount of fabric, it really ended up being just enough. So yeah, it was way too large for my table, so I had to crawl around the dusty floor. I cut out two huge skirt pieces, one front and one back. It should of course be two back because that's where the invisible zipper needs to go. But we'll get to why I did it this way. Spoiler, I made a mistake, okay? So the skirt is pleated all the way around. Also, I cut out sleeves and bodice and lastly facings for the neckline. I like to mark out the entire dart on the wrong side of the fabric so that it's very easy to pin precisely, but then I also sew the darts with a rounded curve to make the point less pointy. Now, had I had the time, I definitely would have made a lining for the dress to make the inside neat. To me, in a beautiful, fancy dress like this, it's a must. To me, at least, an invisible overlock has no business in a piece like this. However, I had no lining fabric in the right color just lying around and there really was no time to go thrift hunting so though it hurt me very much i had to overlock all the raw edges so then i prepped to sew as many seams as possible in the same sitting this very much effectivizes sewing if you plan ahead a little bit so I pinned the sleeves together, the facings, the darts, and the 28 skirt pleats. And I sewed it all in place. When sewing darts, I never backstitch by the end, I just cut the threads off long. This will reduce the common dart bubble. To tidy the darts, I make knots by the ends, then cut the threads off, leaving about 1 cm or a half. Also, I kind of regret this a bit, but because the darts were quite bulky, I wanted to flatten them out more, so I cut them down the middle, which is usually fine when you have a lining because you won't see the fabric fray on the inside, but obviously I wasn't making a lining, which I kind of forgot in the moment, and the raw edges did fray a bit sadly. Next, I pinned all side seams together and then bodice and skirt pieces together. 
Now I may have rushed this design and like everything a bit because I don't know where logic went but I initially thought to put the invisible zipper in the side seam because it's simpler since there's going to be a seam there anyways and we don't need to add one for the back. You don't need to add extra seam allowance for the pattern. It's also nice when the zipper is not in a visible spot, especially since matching a zipper in with your pleats nicely is a mission impossible. However, this does not work with a fitted bodice, obviously. So yeah, what was a rush not thought through decision in order to save a little time, ended up wasting a bunch of it instead. So I had to seam rip and cut the entire dress up center back and say low prayer that there was somehow 3 centimeters of room not calculated into the pattern to use for seam allowance for the new zipper. I re sewed the accessible parts of the side seams to give more room as well. So before reattaching the zipper, I sew the sleeves and facing in place. After cutting it up center back, I had to search the new raw edges. I sewed the center back seam. At the top where I was to place the zipper, I changed the stitch length to a long stitch, back stitching by the transition. Then I steamed the seam, because you can't press velvet. Then I seam ripped those long stitches. and I pinned the zipper in place and sewed. Now back to the facing, I cut little snippets into the seam allowance all around, evenly spaced out every few centimeters. I cut off excess seam allowance. Then I understitched the facing together with the seam allowance. This is so that the facing will stay hidden inside the dress and not want to pop up. Finally, I hem the bottom of the skirt by folding it in first 1cm and then 5cm. And same thing for the sleeve but a smaller hem. For a nice fancy gown it would have been nicer with an invisible stitch but I don't have the presser foot for it and doing it by hand would take forever. And I was finally done, so here are some details and pictures from the night of. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't already or don't if you don't want to but also I appreciate it.
Yeah, yeah, yeah.